Hey everyone, my name is Josh from the channel, Josh Richens, producer here on YouTube, but today I'm at Weiss Advice. Make sure you check out the website, weissadvice.com. Now, today I wanted to talk about editing, and I've done videos on editing before, but they were, you know, kind of like 70s inspired rock tunes, and we were staying really true to the groove of what was there and letting things kind of like move around the click track a little bit. And I wanted to talk about how some of that stuff changes when the context is different. And today the context is going to be very fast death metal music. This is a band of very close friends of mine called Post Human, who I've been tracking drums for over the past couple of days. And I've also been editing their drums. And I wanted to talk about some of the techniques and some of the things that I've been doing. So let's check it out. Now I've opened up this save file and this save file was a kind of safety project that I saved about halfway through before I wanted to commit to something that I was about to try out. And when I tried it out, I did commit to it so I didn't need the safety file. Um, but because it was halfway through, I'm gonna be able to use it to show you how I edited this track because some of it has been edited and some of it hasn't been edited. Now I wanna show you two different sections of this track because it's gonna show you a few of the different things that we had to deal with. One of them is fast blast beats like this. There was a lot of this throughout the project. And the next thing I wanted to show you was this section over here with a fast 16th note fill going into kind of a breakdown section. So you can see there's a few different kinds of patterns and grooves that we're dealing with in a project like this. And the first thing that I did while editing this was come up with a kind of scheme to help me choose how my edits were going to go. So in sections where we had fast blast beats like this, what I wanted to do was make sure that the kicks were completely locked to the grid. And I know that for a lot of people, and even in my past videos, I've advocated for being completely locked as a bit of a no-no, but the context definitely matters. When we're talking about music that's this fast, it's actually a lot harder for us to interpret what's going on in drum beats that are at tempos like this and, you know, playing notes this fast. Uh, and so it really helps to have something like a gridded kick pattern that's going to help our ears lock to the tempo and understand and digest what's going on. But the drummer of this band, Mark, who is an outstanding death metal drummer, plays his snare drums a little ahead of the beat when he's playing his blast beats, and that's something that I like and I actually maintain. So if I zoom in on sections like this, you can even see that I've pretty much respected that. A lot of the kicks are gridded, or at least close to gridded, and all of these snares sit just a little bit ahead of the tempo. Um, I also did mention that this was an older project, so some of these edits aren't entirely worked out, and I'm pretty sure I actually went back to these blasts in the long run uh, and worked on them individually and, and got them a little bit more where I wanted them. So over here, I have a section of blast beat that hasn't been edited yet, and in this portion, I want you to listen to what the kicks do towards the end. Hear how they start to gallop a little bit, especially around here? Now let's listen back to the uh, edited blast beat. And you can see that it gives us a much more consistent, locked feeling that's still really natural. I'm letting things like the ride cymbals be a bit more natural and the snare drum sit a little bit ahead of the beat like it was naturally played. Uh, but I'm gritting that kick drum in sections like this because I want you to be able to train your ears onto something that's going to really hold down the tempo. Now, as for 16th note fills that are completely linear, I went for straight gridded. And it's just because I think it sounds good. I really like the sound, especially in moments like this, of a fill that is completely on the grid. So you can see if I come in here really close, I am very much so on the grid with all of these hits. Let's have a listen to this snare fill. God, isn't that satisfying? So, in the right context, 
locked can be incredible or gridded can be amazing. It's actually a really cool sound. So I don't want to ever sit in one camp or the other. I don't want to ever say that gridding stuff is wrong because you should respect the groove. And I don't ever want to say that uh, you should grid everything because uh, it sounds better locked. Neither of those statements are true. It's all case by case. And so you really want to kind of work on stuff like this a lot so that you can get a feel for when you want to push things entirely on grid, when you want to respect groove. And another section that I have respected the groove in here is during these breakdown moments. So we can hear if we listen to this, it is a little more natural, but if we look at the cuts, I've gone in and moved most of the hits around. Let me show you. I really hear it on this moment here after this snare drum in the second bar where it goes, but duh, duh. There's kind of a little bit of a gap in here because this kick sits so far ahead. Now, the reason I've done that is because in these breakdowns, my rule set that I was following for the uh, editing was to edit to the guitars because there's such a specific groove going on in the guitars and we can see that down here they are a little bit out of time from each other but they're sitting pretty well ahead of the beat and so i wanted the kick drum to reciprocate that because it's really important in this breakdown so let me play a little bit of the breakdown with some of these guitar sounds So I think you should be able to hear that the groove of those guitars is really apparent. They're not like ba da 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 da. There's a real like ga 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 da 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 ba bum ba kind of a thing going on there. I probably looked a little bit silly there. So that was the main headset when I was editing this. I wanted sixteenth note fills to be locked. I wanted big open breakdowny sections to kind of move with the groove of the guitars. And I wanted my blast beats to feel really pushed and in your face, but for all of the extremely fast sections to feel pretty well locked, but still natural. I didn't want to go for completely robotic. Now that brings up the next point that I want to make. And that's that when you're editing stuff like this, sometimes you've got to get a little bit crazy and you've got to do some things that are a little bit uncouth maybe. So I did a bit of editing along the way. And one of the things that I did while we were tracking and kind of editing things to make sure that we were going to be happy was to come into some of the f sections where there are faster 16th note kicks and to edit those so that they were tight so that we could be confident moving forward that everything was going to fall into place and that we weren't going to be surprised by anything down the line. I can show you one of those sections right now because we did end up getting the kick drums locked and we did end up signing off on this as we moved forward. But I realized that actually the edits were quite frankly bad. You can hear the edits. The kick drum kind of sounds a bit funny and the ride cymbal in particular is completely smeared and like just you can all you can hear through it is edits. So I'm going to play this to you and I want you to listen to the ride cymbal in particular. Yeah, how it's kind of got that zingy sound to it. It's like, zzz, 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 zzz. there's no like actual like ting to the, uh, to the transient on the ride cymbal there. That's entirely because I have edited it out because when you're going this fast and things start to rub against each other a little bit, all of a sudden to make one cut work over here, you've got to put it in the middle of a transient over here. So how did I deal with that? Well, I just actually just edited the hands and the kicks separately. That might sound crazy that I completely didn't respect the phase relationship or anything like that, but I quite literally came back to this section here, grabbed all of my cuts just like this, deleted them, grabbed this, pulled it back out so that I could see everything nice and clearly, and then I just grabbed my hands and I came through, and this is the editing technique that I did for the entire thing. And I looked for the transients, made sure that my grid was set up so that I could see where they were. And I edited the hands to the grid like this. So I'll do a small portion of it just quickly, kind of moving backwards here. Normally I go forwards, doesn't make the biggest difference. 
Uh, and I'm also just moving quickly. Went the wrong way with that. So I'll grab all of these transients, put a cut just here, grab this, slide it over like that, and then make sure that this is all covered up. Same deal over here. That one's good. You know what? Those two are both good on their own. So I can grab that, slide that back over. And just do this the whole way along until I get all of my hands in time, which I just about have. Now this first little bit here is a bit harder to see what's going on. There might be a ride symbol on that transient just there. I think there is, but it looks like it's mostly crash decay. And I know that sometimes uh, Mark will hit a crash and kind of leave a gap before his hand comes over to say the ride symbol. But in this case, I think it's gone from crash straight to ride in this, uh, in this blast. So I'm going to pull that back over like that and just pull those hands out like that. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is come in and do the exact same thing to my kick drum, uh, independent of the hands. And yeah, before this project, I would have told you this was a bad idea. But after this project, I'm completely sold because yes, it does some funny things here and there, uh, but they're not funny enough. And the, and the, the kind of like payoff at the end of the day is so worth it versus the, the detriment. And I can show it to you as well. Look at this, these two kicks here that definitely need to be moved around. That would have created issues in trying to make sure that I got the ride symbol in time. And so by doing this, I, I, I just get everything I want out of it. And quite frankly, the issues are negligible. So let me get the last few kicks put in place and do a little crossfade so that we can all hear just this section up to bar 79. All right, now that I've done all of that, I can highlight my work, hit crossfade, and I'll show you how this section here sounds. Uh, in fact, I'll let it play out of this so that we can hear it go into the unedited section as well. Have a listen. I think the results speak for themselves. Sometimes it's okay to break the rules if you need to do it. And if I come straight back to this section over here, we can hear again, this is another part of the edit where we've got those zingy sounding uh, ride cymbal hits. And back over to this section that we've just done here. At the end of the day, the point that I'm really trying to make is just that context is everything. And you need to do a lot of this kind of work uh, so that you know how the rules change in different contexts. And then you need to also break those rules so that you know when to do it, when it's going to be beneficial and when you're going to get yourself in trouble because you're trying to follow those rules too rigidly, like I was with these fast kick patterns and keeping all of my tracks and my edits all nice and lined up together. Uh, it was actually much, much more beneficial to completely disregard that and just go in and edit hands and feet separately and get everything as locked as possible. Anyway, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'm going to do another video with some of this death metal stuff on actually faking 16th note kicks in scenarios like this. Um, there were patches where we had to do that. So I'm going to hand on those techniques because Mark has very graciously said I can talk about it, um, which is really big. And I'm going to talk about some of the ethics around that stuff as well in the next video. So make sure you hit subscribe. And also, like I said at the start of the video, head over to Weiss Advice. Tons of really great courses and even a subscription over there so that you can get everything and a whole bunch of perks as well. Make sure you check it out.
you know what we say here at Wise Advice. We are musicians. Sound is our instrument. I'll catch you next time.